I've been playing through Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and there's some gameplay tips and combat tricks that I think some of you might really want to know about. Also, how to guarantee some wins in the card game Queen's Blood, which is kind of like combat system number two. So let's get into it. I'm Alex, and consider sticking around if you're a fan of RPGs. Disclaimers, Square Enix gave me a copy of the game, and there's a guaranteed chance ahead of... Avalanche. First up, a lot of the new synergy attacks mapped to R1 can actually be used to physically move allies out of harm's way, kind of like a dodge button for characters you're not actively controlling. Many of these offensive and defensive synergies will automatically move your teammate right over to you. Here I use the R1 plus square synergy to get Red out of the way of the Deathclaw's big tryhard attack, which otherwise probably would have KO'd him. Instead it whiffed and it's being punished for it. Next, you don't have just four quick access shortcuts because there's a way to get 12 shortcut options without the need to pause combat or swap over to a different party member. In the gameplay options menu, change issuing commands from menu to shortcuts. That changes the L2 and R2 buttons to now pull up your alternate party member shortcut menus without slowing down the game. Then you can fire off their spells and abilities in real time while maintaining full control of just one character. Like here, using Barrett's Maximum Fury shot, I can still pull up Yuffie and Tifa's shortcut commands to assign them actions while I'm still locked into that long ability animation. This is useful for quickly creating team combo attacks during the staggered damage multiplier, or if you just want to make the combat system even more action-focused and less pausey. When you bring up the commands menu out in the field, you can hold L1 to multi-use things without it closing out the menu afterwards. That way you can chug a string of potions or multicast healing spells a little bit faster. In the main menu, you can set up to three loadouts with different party members and team leaders. There's an easier way to access these loadouts in the commands menu though, by pressing the L1 or R1 to swap the current members of your team. If you want a wider view of the battlefield and more direct control of the camera, I recommend changing the battle camera distance up to three and setting the lock on controls to menu controls and auto camera. That'll widen your view, and the camera will still auto-track your lock on target, but now you can also fully manipulate the camera in any direction. This might cut down on accidentally swapping lock on targets as well. Switching target will then be set to D-pad left and right, and swap characters will be on D-pad up and down, which completely frees up the right analog stick to do whatever you want with it. Some characters can map different shortcut actions for when they're airborne, giving a total of eight shortcuts on just one person. You can quickly force Cloud into aerial combat mode by pressing circle followed by holding square. That'll let you tactically switch to your alternate loadout of shortcuts whenever you want. I like mapping Braver to only activate this way, since it gets a damage boost when it's triggered from the air. One way to get to Tifa's aerial moveset in those shortcuts is with her synergy attacks on R1. Those will call in another character to bounce or throw her up into the air. With Yuffie, you can press triangle triangle to throw your boomerang and recall it to put yourself in aerial combat. I think at this point of the video you might assume I'm a bit obsessed with shortcut actions, and you'd be right. If you find that you're not getting to use the big flashy synergy abilities as often as you think you should be, you might not be using the synergy attacks on R1 enough. These tag team attacks have the bonus of quickly building up the ATB gauge for both characters involved. You can see Cloud and Yuffie just got a huge chunk of ATB just for landing this one Spellblade synergy. You need to actually use ATB to activate spells or abilities with this symbol listed by them to gain the charges that power the more potent synergy abilities. So using synergy attacks means more ATB and more ATB means more synergy abilities you can throw out. But after you've seen these cool animations a few times, you might want to trigger them and then switch to a different party member. That lets you pile on extra damage with them, while the other two have a great time finishing out that animation. Same thing applies to the limit break attack animations as well, you don't have to sit there and watch them every single time. 
you can activate the limit break and then character swap to continue smacking with someone else. Holding L1 will show the current affinity level of your party members, but this button will also overlay on the screen the exact spot of nearby quest objectives, points of interest, and custom pins you've plopped onto the map. If you don't prefer the top of the screen compass style of navigation, you can go into the gameplay options and switch navigation display from tracker to minimap. That'll give you more of a classic style of minimap in the top right corner. Also, keep an eye out for the game telling you unable to obtain something. You can only hold on to a stack of 99 materials, so periodically check and sell off the ones you're maxed out on so you're not missing out on free income. Or you can use those excess resources to craft some stuff, and you get an XP boost for every first time creation. This next one is more of just something I found interesting when you're playing as Kate Sith. I want to give props to the dev team for letting the dice ability function off of real in-game physics. If you don't like how the roll turned out, you have a few seconds to slightly nudge the dice in a direction of your desired result. Or if you just want to leave it up to pure chance again, attack or roll into it to send it flying. Rolling a 1 will do a fire and thunder spell, a 2 is a hyper beam, 3 is arrow and blizzard, 4 is the total outrage buff, 5 is the regenerative aura, and 6 is the expansive shield buff. Now a little bit of Queen's Blood. The most reliable way I've found to win matches uses the card Grand Horn. This is one of the unique types of cards that doesn't get played on an open space, but over your own cards. The ability to do that gives you some of the most powerful ways to shift the outcome of a match. This card can let you open up spots on the board that normally you wouldn't be able to. Here for example, I use it to replace one of my own cards, shutting down the only available spot the enemy had left, so they can no longer play. Here, I've already won this match, but just to further insult my opponent, why not squeeze one more point in my favor by replacing a 2 value card with a 3. Overkill! Eat it, Neil. One way to obtain a Grand Horn card is at the Queen's Blood vendor in Costa del Sol. In this shop, you'll find the Queen's Blood Booster Pack Heavy Hitters, which will give you that sweet, sweet Grand Horn card. Alright, so I promised an avalanche, so um, there you go. Now, I need to know, what do you guys think of the second chapter of Final Fantasy VII? And I'm curious to see how many people played the original game versus just the new remake. Put an OG down in chat or remake, whichever applies. And if you happen to have any direct questions about Rebirth, feel free to hit me up right here at Boomstick Alex. Thanks for checking this out today, and I'll see you next time.